Coyotes, Amanda Mays here for your Yin Yasa class today, whatever day you are joining from. So excited to be here with all of you. So for class today, make sure you've got a few pillows. We've got two here, got two over there. Um, you could just place those off to the side of your space. We'll use them a little bit later in the second half of our class, the Yin part. So let's start with the first half, the Vin Yasa. We'll begin in child pose. For child pose, draw your big toes to touch. Open your knees out nice and wide. Sink your glutes as close as you can get them towards your heels. Extend your palms up towards the top of your space. Maybe today you keep your forearms lifted as you press your forehead down to the mat. Notice that feeling right away when you press back and settle into this posture. Maybe rock your forehead from side to side. This sort of ceremonial action that you take each time you come here. And if you've been practicing yoga for what feels like a long time now, maybe the four corners of your space already feel like home to you. Or maybe not. Both are great. Today in this hour-long practice together, we'll work to create home here within the four corners of our mat. We feel really rooted, safe, and like we can always come here whenever we need, whenever we want. This place is ours. It's a sacred space that we created. We'll start with some breath. Take a big inhale, fill all the way up. And open mouth, exhale, sigh all the way out. Again, big breath in. Big breath out. Last one together like that, inhale. And open mouth, exhale. This time, inhale, fill your lips. Exhale through your nose. And turn on your ujjayi breath. Our ujjayi breath, the one that really feels like home to you. Strong and long inhales through your nose and exhales back through your nose. Become really familiar with the cadence, the rhythm of your own breath. Something that's unique just to you. You're ready on your next inhale. Rise up to a tabletop pose. Stack your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees and draw your gaze down. Inhale for cow pose, drop your belly down. Create a big arch in your low spine, draw your gaze nice and high. Exhale, cat pose, round tuck and curl. Tuck your chin into your chest, press your belly button through to your low back. Again, breathe in, cow pose, belly dips, gaze goes up. Exhale, cat pose, round tuck, curl. Last one like that, breathe in, cow pose. And you exhale, find cat. Inhale, find a neutral tabletop pose. Extend your right palm high towards the sky and look up at it. You can roll your wrist a few times to the right, maybe the left. Breathe in. Exhale, thread the needle, reach your right arm underneath your left armpit. Place your right ear to the mat as you gaze over to the left side of your space. You could stay just like this, or if you'd like, continue to reach your left palm up past the top of your mat. Think about reaching in opposite directions to lengthen and create some more space through your both shoulder blades and shoulder girdles. Take one breath in. And one breath out. Inhale, press through your left palm, press yourself back up, re-extend your right fingertips high. And you exhale, we'll meet in that neutral tabletop pose. Inhale, extend your left arm up, look up at it. Roll your wrist a few times to the right and then to the left. Breathe in. Exhale, thread the needle, reach your left arm underneath your right arm pit. Place your left ear to the mat as you gaze over to the right side. You can stay like this or reach your right palm up past the top of your space. 
Make sure you pull your hips back evenly. Keep them stacked high over your knees. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale. Plant yourself back to your right palm. Re-extend your left fingertip nice and high. And exhale, find a neutral tabletop twist. From here, take one breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Tuck your toes. Send your hips up and back behind you. Our first down dog with class, take the movements that just feel familiar. They feel like you. Things that make your body feel good in this moment. Ready? Find some stillness here in your downward facing dog. Gaze behind you. Ensure there's some space between your feet. Place a slight bend in your knees to drive your heels closer to the mat. Every time you're here, lift your hips nice and high. Press your chest back towards your thighs. Take a breath in. A breath out. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, ragdoll pose at the top of your mat. Walk your feet up behind your wrists. Keep your feet about hip width distance. Bend your knees generously to release your belly towards your thighs. Relax your head and neck to hang heavy. You can stay here in stillness or rock from side to side. Find some movement if that's calling to you. Wherever, make, wherever you are, make sure you're still using your deep and deep breath. Let's see how to release your hands to the mat if they're not already there. With your feet at hip width distance, bend at your knees and rise to stand. One vertebrae at a time. Once you're at the top, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Relax them back and down your spine. Press your hands together at your heart and close over your eyes for some as you see the expanding and expansion pose. Yogis have set the intention for our practice here together today. See if you can create the space that feels like home within the four corners of your mat. Take movements that feel comfortable. Take breaths that feel familiar. Know that you're always safe to be exactly who you are in the sacred space that you've created. With intention in mind, take a big breath in. A big breath out. Inhale, seal your lips, seal your intention. Ujjayi, exhale. And flutter your eyes open. Release your palms down by your sides. Inhale, mountain pose, sit off and extend your fingertips up and overhead. You can gaze up or gaze out. Just pause and breathe here. Feel really strong through your feet as you press through and then lift up. Draw your kneecaps off, rather your thighs off of your kneecaps. Drop your shoulders back into their sockets. Take one breath in. As you exhale, we'll take a half moon stretch, but watch me. So take your right arm, wrap it just around your belly to feel a little bit more supported here. I like to place my right hand to my left hip bone. First, breathe in, lift up. And then as you exhale, hinge over towards the right side of your space. We've got this side moon stretch here. So ensure that the hinge happens from the hip up. That way you're supporting your low back. Squeeze your belly and then square your hips forward again. Gaze up if you Inhale, mountain pose, tadasana, both arms up and over. And as you exhale, we've got this half moon to the other side, but here, wrap your left arm around your belly. You're gonna place your hand to your right hip bone. Inhale, stand tall first, and then exhale, hinge over to the left side of your space. Bump your hips to the right, but reach to the left. Check in with your legs. Redistribute the weight so that you've got even weight in both feet. Press up through your strong legs, and then reach over to the left. Inhale back to mountain pose, Tadasana. Reach nice and high. Exhale forward, fold, dry your hands to your heart. Hinge from your hips, reach towards the ground in front of you. Breathe in halfway, lift, place your hands to your shin bones and gaze down. Drive the crown of your head forward, draw the weight towards the top of your feet. Take one breath in. And exhale, round, tuck, and curl. Tent your fingertips on the mat in front of you and hide your tippy toes, but really deep into your knees here as you find a seat with your glutes on your heels. Two options today, yogis, you choose. Option one, if you'd like to open up more through your traps and delts, reach your palms out in front of you. Finger, uh, rather, tuck your fingertips on the mat. Relax your shoulders away from your ears and tuck your chin in towards your chest. Feel that stretch. 
Option two, more of a balance challenge, but also an opportunity to receive a hug. Wrap your forearms around your shin bones, give yourself a squeeze, and then again, try to tuck your chin in towards your chest. Take a breath in, a breath out. Drop your heels, inhale, halfway lift, place your hands to your shins. Exhale, downward facing dog, point your palms and just step back. Reset with one breath in and one breath out. Let's flow, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Breathe in, halfway lift, place your hands to your shins. Exhale, forward fold, release. Inhale, mountain pose, Tadasana, stand up, lift high. Then as you exhale, half moon stretch to the right, grab your belly with your right arm. Breathe in, lift up first, and then exhale over towards the right side of your face. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, half moon to the left, wrap your left arm around your belly. Inhale, stand up tall first. Exhale, hinge over towards the left side of your space. Inhale, mountain pose, Tadasana, both arms up. Exhale, forward fold, nice and slow, with a bend, release. Breathe in, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, round, tuck, and curl, place your hands to the mat, find a tiny seat. Drop your heels, inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, downward, facing dog. One more time, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, Tadasana, lift up. Exhale, half moon stretch, right arm around your belly, reach over to the right. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, half moon to the other side, left arm around your belly, right arm up and over. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, round, tuck, and curl. Find a tiny seat, tighten your fingertips. Drop your heels, inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, downward facing dog, plant your palms and step back. Take one breath in and one breath out. Moving on, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your space. Breathe in, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold, release your back. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sit low, reach up or out in front of you. Gaze down, ensure you can see your toes, and then sink your tailbone a little bit deeper. Lift your chest, think upward facing dog in your chest. Stay here for one breath in. Exhale, crescent lunge with airplane arms. Step your left toes back and behind you. Just take a moment to get really stable here, Yogi. So keep your back heel lifted off the mat. Place that deep lunge in your front kneecap. Squeeze your belly a lot, and then reach your arms along your sides, back and behind you as you press your shoulder blades to touch. Take a breath in. Stay like this, breath out. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjane Asana, just stand up. Reach your arms up and overhead, and then again, readjust your feet. Place that deep lunge in your front kneecap, maybe shorten or widen to gain a little bit more stability. Take one breath in. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Pivot your back foot flat and maintain that deep lunge in your front kneecap. Look at your back toes, maybe point them in slightly. A slight bend in your back knee. Reach out through opposite palms, turn your biceps and triceps on. Take a big breath in. Big breath out. Inhale, reverse warrior. Send your right arm nice and high towards the sky. Look up at it. See if you can recommit to that lunge in your front kneecap. Little to no weight in your back hand. Take a big breath in. Exhale, chaturanga. Actually, just kidding, you guys. High plank pose is where we'll meet. Place your hands to the mat and step your right toes back. Stay here for one breath in. And exhale, downward facing dog. Send your hips nice and high. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Breathe in, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold, release. 
Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sit nice and low, reach up or out. I really like to drop my wrist to shoulder height because my shoulders tend to be pretty tight. And then I like to keep my feet about hip width distance. Feels a lot better to have some more space to drop my butt lower and lift my chest up. Take a breath in. And exhale, crescent lunge with airplane arms. Set your right toes back and behind you. Maintain this lunge in your front knee. Maybe a tiny bend in your back knee just to open up more through your back hip. Tilt your chest forward at about 45 degrees. Press the imaginary beach ball that's in between your hands. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana. Just lift your chest, lift your arms up. Pause here. Notice how the stretch changed. Because we lifted our chest, now I feel a huge stretch in my back right hip flexor. Again, if you feel wobbly, find some more square footage at your base by shortening and widening your stance. As you extend your palms up, draw your pinkies in. Take a breath in. And exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Pivot your back foot flat. Maintain that deep lunge in your front knee. If you have really tight hips like me, you could always parallel your feet. Come out of the posture for a minute. Shake some space, side to side. And then back into your warrior two pose. Place your heels on one line, ensuring you have heel to arch alignment. And then press the weight into both feet sort of in the direction out so that it feels like you'll rip your mat in half. We're activating our inner hips by doing that. Gaze over your left fingertip. Breathe in. And stay and breathe out. Inhale, reverse warrior. Send your left arm up. Look up at it if you can. Relax this left shoulder back. Recommit to the 90 degree bend in your front kneecap. Squeeze your belly to support your low back. Take a breath in. And exhale, high plank pose. Point your palms to the mat. Step your left toes back. Stay here for a breath in. And exhale, downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, take an inhale breath. And an exhale breath. Let's flow. Breath to movement yogis, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your seats. Breathe in, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold to release. Inhale, chair pose, utkatasana, sit low, reach up or out. Exhale, crescent lunge with airplane arms, step your left toes behind you. Inhale, crescent lunge, anjaneyasana, lift your chest. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, open up. Breathe in, reverse warrior, right arm high. Exhale, high plank pose, top of a push-up position, hold there. Breathe in. And exhale, down dog. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your seat. Breathe in, halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, release. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sit low. Exhale, crescent lunge with airplane arms. Step your right toes behind you. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana, lift your chest. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, open up. Breathe in, reverse warrior, left arm lifts. Exhale, high plank pose, top of a push up, pause. Breathe in. Exhale, downward facing. One more time each side, inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sit low, reach up or out. Exhale, crescent lunge, airplane arms, left toes step back. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Breathe in, reverse warrior, right arm lifts. Exhale, high plank pose and pause. Take one breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last side, feel at home in your own body. Take the postures in a way that feels safe and good to you. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Breathe in, halfway lift. Exhale, forward. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana, sit low. Exhale, crescent lunge, airplane arms, step your right toes back. Inhale, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana, lift your chest. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, open up. 
Breathe in, reverse warrior, left arm lift. Exhale, high plank pose, top of the push-ups and fall. Take one breath in. And exhale, downward facing dog. In your down dog, breathe in. And breathe out. Our last standing series of class today. Inhale your right toes high towards the sky. Exhale, low lunge, sweep your right foot all the way through. Drop your back knee down to the mat. Inhale for crescent moon. Before you reach your arms up, make sure you're stable on your legs. So sh again, shorten and widen if you need. Stack your right knee over your right ankle, your left hip over your left knee. When you're ready, squeeze your abductors, outer hips in towards center. Lift up from there and then extend your palms up. You should feel nice and stable. Take one breath in. Exhale, revolve crescent moon. Draw your hands to your heart. Hinge forward and hook your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. This is a perfect place to stay. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you could always tuck your back toes. Lift your back and knees to hover and just hang out or there. All right. For your revolved crescent moon pose, squeeze your belly to elevate it off your thigh. Press your palms together, work your thumbs towards your heart. Gaze up as you point your right elbow towards the sky. With every inhale, lengthen and straighten out your spine. With every exhale, twist and gaze back. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, twist. Last time, inhale. Exhale, runner's lunge is your release. Place your hands to the inside of your front foot. Drop your back knee to the mat if it's not already. Shimmy your right toes to the top right corner of your space. You can keep this foot flat or find the outer edge. Stay up on your palms, find your forearms, or maybe reach for a pillow as it helps to draw the ground a little bit closer to you. Again, get nice and cozy, settle in here. Feel safe. if you're not already there. Shimmy your right foot back in between your hands and then re-engage your back leg for a low lunge. Begin to crawl yourself over towards the left side of your mat. Point all 10 toes that way. Press up through just your hands, halfway lifting your spine. As you exhale, fold deep into your prasarita. Point your toes in, heels out. Hands can stay on the mat or on the ground, maybe to the outer edges of your feet with bent knees. When you're here, think about lifting your tailbone higher and scooting your head and neck underneath you. Feel that nice hamstring stretch along the whole back line of your leg. lift just in your spine. Exhale, crawl yourself towards the front of your mat. Low lunge is where we'll meet. Breathe in, three-legged dog. Send your right toes nice and high. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last side, inhale your left toes high. Exhale, low lunge. Step your left foot all the way through. Drop your back knee to the mat. Inhale, crescent moon. Again, before you reach your arms up, Feel steady and stable in your trunk, the lower half of your body. Squeeze your outer hips in, squeeze your belly, lift your palms up. Breathe in. Exhale, revolve, crescent moon, draw your hands together at your heart. Hinge forward and hook your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Do what you did on the last side. So if you stayed here, great. If not, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and elevate your back. Consider gliding your right rib cage under the left one to activate that twist. And then keep your head and neck in line with the rest of your spine. Breathe in, draw the crown of your head forward. Exhale, twist and gaze back. Breathe in, lengthen, lift. Exhale, twist. Last time, inhale. Exhale, runner's lunge is where we'll meet. If your back knee was elevated, drop it to the mat. 
Everyone place your hands to the inside of your front foot. Shimmy your left toes to the top left corner of your face. Keep your foot flat to find the outer edge. Stand your hands. Find your forearms or wherever you are. Notice right away how different the two sides are. Please let this practice meet your body where it's at. So use your prop, prop rather as you might need to support you in this pose. your left foot back in between your hands, re-engage your back leg for a low lunge, and then crawl yourself over towards the right side of your space, point all 10 toes that way. Inhale, press up just through your hands, halfway lift in your spine, exhale, fold into your cross or knee on the side. If you are looking for a bind, you can clasp your palms together behind you. Please work the insides of your hands to touch so that it protects your wrists over time. If you're ready, you can drop your fists towards your head. Your shoulders will tell you if this is too much. If that is you, please release your grip. And take the variation you did on the last side with your hands to the ground. Yogis, it's also really helpful if you have a t-shirt, a towel, or a strap. Even my blanket will do here. And your bind is just creating a, an extender in between your arms. Found that bind, release your grip. Everyone place your palms to the mat. Press up to your hands, halfway lift in your spine. Exhale, low lunge, crawl yourself towards the front of your space. Breathe in, three legged dogs, and your left toes nice and high. Exhale, downward facing dog. Our last down dog of class today. Take a breath in. And a breath out. Inhale, shift to a high plank. You exhale, slowly lower all the way down until your belly reaches the ground. All right, we're moving into the yin portion of our class today where we'll begin to slow everything down. So kind of take a moment to pause and reset here, a real sort of change in the intention of our class. Sphinx pose is where we'll be. Draw your forearms on the mat out in front of you. Be sure that your shoulders stack over your elbows wrist just kind of hang out the side. Everything that's behind you from the waist down, shake it out. Your glutes, your quads, your calf muscles. As we transition into our yin practice, acknowledge how inactive the upcoming postures are with a goal of stretching in a really inactive way to work the fascia, the hard outer casing that surrounds all of that. only be in this sphinx pose for two minutes. You can keep your head at neutral. If you'd like, you could always tuck your chin in towards your chest. Or drop your head and neck back as we draw your chin up. If you'd like to deepen your yogis, we've got an option for um, seal pose. So draw your head at neutral. You can reach your arms out in front of you, palms find the ground, forearms lift. This feels like a lot in my back, so I like to hang out in sphinx pose, but play around, see how your body feels today, and what feels best for you. Thank you. 
in from our Sphinx pose. We're going to try a crisscross shoulder stretch. We'll try it. If it doesn't feel good, please come back to this pose or crocodile pose, which just means you'll stack your forearms out in front of you and rest your forehead on your forearms. All right, if you're joining me in this crisscross shoulder stretch, you'll reach your right arm underneath the left one and you'll have to kind of center your arms out in front of you so that your elbows kind of stack on top of one another. From here, shimmy your body forward so that you're kind of lying on your elbows and then begin to release forward in this crisscross shoulder stretch. Again, if this hurts your elbow, if this hurts your forearm, your back, your neck, please just come out of this posture and hang out in crocodile pose. We're definitely kind of trying something that's pretty intense here. So my goal is that you listen to your body and know when something feels good or maybe when it doesn't. We'll only hang out in this pose for about a minute. And then we'll slot back. The goal is that your body weight presses down onto your arms, creating some compression here, but also opening in a big way across your back, your shoulders, your delts, feeling expansive as they pull kind of apart, creating some more space. Inhale, begin to lift your chest back up. You'll need to unhook your arms. Let's everyone meet in a quick crocodile pose. Forearms to the ground, forehead resting down. All right, when you're ready, and if you'd like to try the other side, meet me in Sphinx, forearms to the mat. And on this side, we'll weave your left arm underneath the right one. Again, kind of center your elbows out in front of you. And then once you do, shimmy your body forward so that some of your body weight is on your arms. And then you'll just lean forward over your arms. So if you feel pain in your shoulders, come out. Your elbows, your forearms, come out. This posture just feels different in everyone's anatomy. You really won't know until you give it a try. You always hang out in crocodile. This is where I'll meet in a little over a minute from now. If you join me in this crisscross shoulder stretch, lift your chest back up, up, unhook your arms, and then just place your forearms out in front of you, rest your head down, cross crocodile pose. You might need to move your arms a little bit to get the blood flowing back in. If you really compress there, you want to just shake your arms out. When you're ready, we'll move into our next shape, earth hug pose, a much more restorative posture. So with your belly on the mat, take your right arm, draw it out by your side like a cactus arm or think half of a goalpost. Your other arm's just straight. 
opposite leg, left leg, bend that knee so that it creates the shape of a goal post or a cactus arm. Other leg is straight. So opposite arm and leg are goal posted. Other arm and leg are kind of just hanging out. Place one ear to the mat. Play around with both ears though because one will feel more of an intense stretch. Where can you find your sweet spot or your perfect side? Begin to surrender more here. Notice if maybe you're holding on to some of the muscles around your left hip flexor, clenching there, or maybe even the ones around your right shoulder. Let it go towards the ground to release. You breathe in, begin to draw your chin back towards center. And then draw both arms and legs by your sides. Maybe just rock on your belly side to side. And we'll swap sides, earth hug pose on the left. Take your left arm out by your side like a cactus arm or a goal post. Do the same thing with your opposite leg. So right leg bend so that it can come out like a goal post or a cactus arm. Other arm and leg are just kind of hanging out straight. Play around one ear to the mat or the other. See which feels best. Settle into that side. And with awareness, begin to make your way back through center. 
kind of rock again along its side, just let them feel like they're finding neutral. When you're ready, plant your palms by your sides, press yourself up to a tabletop pose, nice and slow. We'll drop into heart melting pose, known as Anapatasana in Sanskrit. Place your forearms to the mat in front of you, and then rest your forehead down to the mat. Keep your hips nice and high over your knees. And continue to reach your palms past the top of your space. Feel your pecs as they hammock in between your shoulders. The muscles of your belly release. And your low spine on the back bend. We'll be here just for about two minutes. If at any time this posture hurts your shoulders or your neck, just come back up to a seat. You can sit with your glutes on your heels in kind of a seated meditation. You're always welcome to drop back in. We're over halfway there. Nice and slowly as we begin to press yourself back up to your palms. And then from your tabletop pose, grab one or one of your pillows, place it on the mat behind you. If you can, scoop your right knee up towards your face, cross your right leg over the left and you're kind of in this funky tabletop pose. Do me a favor, if you can, pull that pillow a little bit closer to you, center your hips behind you, and then find a seat in our cow face posture. So it helps me to have this pillow underneath my glutes. It just lifts my hips a little bit higher. Cow face pose looks really different in everyone's anatomy. So for me, my right knee is stacked somewhere over top the left, but if your knee is a lot closer towards you, or maybe there's lots of space between your kneecaps, you've always got this other pillow. You can scoot it in between your knees. And then keep in mind that your feet are the gas and the brake in this posture. So you can play around with drawing your feet farther away from you, see how that feels, excuse me. And then maybe draw your feet closer towards you. Notice how that changes the stretch. This is a lot in our outer hips, but I feel it in my inner hips too. You're welcome to stay here. This is a great spot to rest and 
sort of reflect. If you'd also like to take cow face in your arm, you can join me. Reach your right arm up by your right ear. Bend your right elbow, place it to the small of your back. It's just below your neck in between your shoulders. And then take your left arm, wrap it all the way around your low spine. Place that hand somewhere on your back too. Think about sitting up really tall and squeezing your elbows in. And then just breathing like this. This is certainly a more active posture. So if you're looking for less active, just release your arms. about a minute to go here. If you're feeling a really intense stretch to your hips, maybe you'd consider taking some open mouth exhales to help create some space in those really tight spots. Breathe as slow as you can. Begin to hinge forward again. Place your palms on the mat out in front of you. Unhook your legs. We'll just meet in a neutral tabletop pose for now. Just kind of just sway and rock your hips from side to side. And we'll take cow face leg on the left side. So draw your left knee up towards your face if you can and cross your left leg over the right one. Make some space for your hips behind you by getting your ankles out of the way and then if you can grab to that pillow once more find a seat on it or cow face leg on this side again left leg stacks over top the right one maybe on this side you've got some more space so you really would like to utilize that pillow in between your legs just play around with your ankles draw them farther closer whatever feels good and then if you took the arms on the last side you're welcome to take them here too Cow face arms, you'll extend your left arm up, bend your left elbow, place your hand just below your neck on your back, then wrap your right arm around your low spine, place that hand somewhere on your back too. Think about sitting up tall and squeezing your elbows in towards you. If this feels like too much, too active, release your arms and just let you know when we're almost there.
the side. Put your palms on the mat in front of you. Unhook your legs so that you can find a tabletop pose. Place them or prop up to the side. Again, you can shake your hips from side to side. Ready, find a seat with your butt on the mat. Open up towards one of the wide edges of your mat. You'll need to face right or left. Move into straddle pose. Extend your legs out by your sides. But remember, this is inactive stretching, so maybe don't go to the depth of your fullest expression. Find a spot where you could hang out for four minutes because that's how long we'll be here. So with all your props, some options. You can scoot a pillow underneath each kneecap. This is kind of great, especially if you've got a hard floor. If you do have a hard floor, you might need to negotiate here. Would you rather have your heels or your butt on the mat? I like my butt on the mat. You could always scoot back, put your butt on the floor and your heels on the mat. If you've got other props, you could take those and kind of create a big uh, pillow or prop a bridge out in front of you. And then let the legs do what they'd like to do here. Maybe they go out to the sides, a slight bend in the knees, toes flex up towards your face. Maybe they even dip in. Just let your anatomy be here. Be home in your own body. Before you hinge forward, consider rooting your tailbone down in the ground. Feel stable through that part of your body. And then from the hips up, you'll hinge forward. Maybe you rest your forearms down on something. Maybe your chest or your forehead. Stack your pillows nice and high so that you feel really supported here. We'll be in this pose for four minutes. We're already almost a minute in. Tuck your chin in. Relax your neck. halfway there. less than a minute to go. Can you commit to stillness for this final part of this posture? Both stillness of the mind and of the body. Finding the discipline to, instead of reacting, acknowledging when things pop up, whether it's an itch or a thought. And just becoming aware of that. And let's try to stay here for another 45 seconds.
nice and slow and steady you'll need to roll yourself back up to a seat place some of your props off to the side of your mat and begin to shift forward so you're facing the front of your mat again take one of these pillows place it behind you and we'll roll all the way down so that your shoulders capture the pillow so you lie back shoulders maybe mid back capture the pillow and your head kind of hangs off the back of it. Arms nice and wide, legs out long. If it feels better for you to plant the soles of your feet down and bend your knees right down, you can do that. We're headed to Shavasana. In Yin, it's known as, known as Pentacle Pose. So if this does not feel like a comfortable variation, just come back up, remove that pillow from underneath you, place it off to the side. And take the variation of Shavasana that feels best to you. Here we are, let's settle in together. Take a big inhale breath. Open mouth, exhale, release. Got these phrases in our society like home is where the heart is or home is wherever I'm with you. You think about those things. We're always at home and on the four corners of our mat with ourselves, with our heart. Sometimes the word home can elicit negative feelings. That's okay. Maybe it elicits really positive feelings. Or maybe you're sick and stuck at being at home. That's okay, too. The point of today's class was to open up your eyes to the ability to find home on your mat wherever you are. Whether that's wherever you are emotionally, physically, or in the world. Know that these four corners that you carve out for you can always be a place where you can ground down, where you can be yourself, and where you can feel safe. You're welcome to stay in this shavasana for however long you need it. If you're ready to rejoin your day, just start slow, wiggle your fingers and your toes, tuck your arms up and overhead, and a full body stretch. Breathe in. Breathe out. Be mindful as you roll all off of your pillow and onto your right or left side for supported fetal posture. Use one of your biceps as a pillow, gather your knees into your chest, and throw the palms to the earth. When you're ready, press yourself up to a seat with legs crossed, eyes closed, hands at heart center, and sit tall. Draw your thumbs between your eyebrows, take a collective breath in. A unifying breath out. I honor and am so thankful for the light and love that lives in you because it lives in me. Given those things, we are united. We are the same. We are one. We are four together, saying Namaste. Thank you for showing up to share your practice with me, for carving out an hour of time for you. Again, my name is Amanda. Please leave me some comments below if you've got some questions. I'm always here to answer them. Otherwise, Namaste, friends. Have a great day.